Hi, this is Katie Segal. I uh, am Gemma Teller on Sons of Anarchy on the <laughs> FX Network. And she's a badass. Yeah, a badass. Interjecting. <laughs> Who loves to shop? I am here with Katie Segal. We're talking fashion and hair. <laughs> Very far from Sons of Anarchy. Oh, but favorite subject. Well, you probably don't get to talk a lot of fashion on the set of Sons no. of Anarchy, do you? Well, actually, though, Gemma does have really great clothes. I mean, if you like that biker leather stiletto thing, which who doesn't? Who doesn't? Uh, and it's sexy. sexy. It's, yes, it's a sexy badass, and those big shoes make everybody look pretty good. So Does it's that fun. help? I know people always talk about how once they put on the costume, it kind of like, you just feel it, just sort of changes your sword. Sort oh, of. absolutely. Yeah. Most of the, the, the sort of well-known parts I've played are so also tied into what they look like. Peg Bundy was definitely became her when I put those shoes on. And the bouffant, the whole thing had to be there. And, uh, and Gemma's the same way, you know, we're in that world. I mean, we, we have extensions for the blonde pieces in my hair. I was bleaching it and then my hair started to fall out. Not good. So now we have blonde extensions and we put long hair and big shoes and tattoos and suddenly I'm a badass. It's so this, but this season, there's a little more vulnerability with Gemma. You're going yes. down a little bit of a different path. For those who've watched, um, you know, season four left off uh, Gemma estranged from her husband, yeah. who, who was really not very nice to her. No, I saw that bouncing her. the head on the floor yeah. promo. Yeah. You know, Padilla. Gemma. I guess your name wasn't the only thing you forgot, huh? You were funny, sexy, a wedding ring. Seemed like a good idea. You know. I don't even know who you are anymore. Why don't you bounce my face off the floor and maybe you'll recognize me. The writing is so callback. fantastic. Oh yes, yeah. I'll tell my husband you said that. My yes. husband is the creator and main writer. And yes, he's, he is. They do, the whole staff, they do a great yeah. job. Um, but yeah, so Gemma's left sort of in this vulnerable place where she's displaced from her husband, her son has become what she'd always hoped he would be, which is at the head of the table of the club. He's right. now president of the club. But it's sort of, you know, he's kind of kicking her out to the side a little bit too. Right. Well, you've won a Golden Globe for this role. Hmm. You've had so many successful shows. You've been on so many successful shows. Do you sort of have a sense from the beginning of if, when something's going to be fantastic and go for many seasons and have a huge fan base? No, you don't. Really? Well. I never did with Married with Children. I thought it would be gone in a year. I thought it was too out there. It, and it was pretty out there. And so then, have you broken it down? Do you know sort I of? I don't know what the deal is. I, I do know that the key to a really long lasting show is, well, the writing, number one, but then the casting. Yeah. And that's about chemistry. So can you give us a little teaser for, for this season, what we, we can expect? I know your husband has said it's maybe seven seasons is going to be the magic number. Yeah. yeah. Are you one of those when you go home, do you want to know or do you not want to know? Oh yeah, I beg him to tell really? me. Really? <laughs> and does he hold back? Totally. He tells me nothing. Kurt. Which, which is actually, <laughs> is, it's actually a good thing that he tells me nothing because I'm also, it's kind of good to be in real time of our show because it takes place like a season will be over a two, three week period. Yeah. So, as in life, you don't really know what's going to happen next. So it's kind of good to have it unfold as it does right. and to be with the other actors. Right. But um, yeah, sometimes I I, uh, I get really nosy and pushy and doesn't really work. You, you, I've you tried can't. all kinds of really? things. Really? So your husband is a happy man, but he still doesn't cough up Does the information. Does not cough up the info. <laughs> well, speaking of the popularity of the show, Yes. We always tweet out, we want people to, you know, tweet questions. Oh, And great. Roy Hibbert, he is the center for the Indiana Pacers, basketball player. Huge fan of the show. Wow. And he got so excited about asking you questions that he actually sent in from Cabo on vacation a video. Wow. Video questions for you. We have a monitor behind you. Okay. And we are going to, you can turn around. <laughs> you looked frightened for a second. I promise you Roy is very okay. friendly. Um, we have some questions from Roy. Okay, great. So let's kick it off. Hey Katie, hey. Daniel Highwood, this is Roy Hibbert of the Indiana Pacers. Got a couple questions for you. First one, your husband Kurt, Kurt show creator, big part of the show, is a little weird having uh, love scenes with Clay when he's around, you know, knowing that you have to go home with him at night. Uh, no, actually it's not weird at all. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, I have to say, you know, and you'll see this season, there's there's some romance going on in, in, yeah. in lots of different directions. But, you know, as actors and right, you know, we really are able to separate yeah. between what's our work world and what's our personal life. You know, the way he tells stories, everything is um, 
cohesive with the, with what he's trying to do, yeah. the story he's trying to tell. So it's not gratuitous kissing or violence or sex or it's none of that. It's not gratuitous. It's not for the sake of doing it. And I can, well, I can imagine too, being on him being on set and actually seeing it. Sometimes that's probably better than the imagination. If it's somebody who you know is not seeing you at work, it's like, what did you get up to today? How well was it steamy when you were oh, shooting? Yeah. I think I think it's very mysterious to people that are not involved yeah. in our sweaty soundstage life. You know, if you actually spend any time on a soundstage, you realize it's really not the most romantic place to be. Right. And that we're using our imaginations. Yes. Okay, question. We have, I think we have another one from Roy. Oh, Roy loves the show. I have a question. Your mom on the film and off off film. You know, how, how hard is it to, you know, separate Gemma from, you know, your daily life? You know, how does she, how do you stop her from rearing, rearing her ugly head? Well, or does uh, she? <laughs> I don't have a gun in my purse. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. My children would definitely say I go on the rampage every once in a while in terms of, you know, pay, losing my patience. But, you know, it's a very different approach. I think that uh, Gemma has the very same maternal instinct that I do, which is I would kill you if you cross my children. Right. I don't think I would literally do it, whereas Gemma might. Because might she has a gun arrested. in her purse. <laughs> yes, Gemma has a gun in her purse. But uh, So there's a lot of similarities, I would say, in terms of instinctual motherhood. Actually, speaking of children, I saw the funnier die. It was the grandson oh. of anarchy. Hey, kids! What the hell are you doing here? And where are your parents? How did you get on my lot? Get the hell out of here. How does the whole funny or die thing happen? Because I feel like, is it, do they approach they you? They call is you it, up. They do. And they, they had written, they had this idea and they pitched us the idea and we were like, yeah, okay. Sounds good. Let's have a bunch of children running around ruling the world yes, with, 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 with guns. With little tricycles. <laughs> okay, I think we have one last question from Roy. Okay. Sorry to make you turn around. Last question. If you ever need a seven foot two black man in Sam Crow or in the Niners, I'm your guy, you know. I'm, uh, I have very little acting experience. I'm easy on the eyes. I'm a hard worker. I get in there. I act. I do what I have to do. You know, let me know. Have your people talk to my agent. And we can make this happen, all right? Thank you. Have a nice day. I love how Roy calls himself easy on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> my question Not to Roy, I would wonder if he can ride a bike. One of the There's a good, that's question. a good question. And he's a very tall basketball player, that correct? That could be tough. That he might have to have a, a custom-made <laughs> custom motorcycle. Harley. Well, speaking of crossing over, your music career. Yes. Open for Bob Dylan or backup for Bob Dylan? No, I was a background singer. For most of my 20s, I supported myself as a musician, and I worked with Bob Dylan and Etta James and Bette Midler and Tanya Tucker and that was really what I was doing and all the while I would come home and I had my own little bands and those were the days when you could actually get a record deal which I don't even know right. how it happens how now. How does that even work now? Well you have to just put, I'm, like I'm making a new record right now, I will put it out on my website and I will you know find different ways to do it. So do you stay in touch with any of these people like Bette or any of Yeah, like Bette called me when I won the Golden Globe and you know, we check in, you kind of check yeah. in from afar. Plus, it's sort of interesting with Bette. I think that once you've ever worked for Bette Midler, I think I think you always work for Bette Midler. She's just, she has that mother hen sort of approach. Well, it was great having you here. Yeah. Congrats on the new season. And the record-breaking Sons of Anarchy. Record-breaking Sons of Anarchy. Critically acclaimed Sons of Anarchy. Golden Anarchy. Globe winner. Oh, yeah. There you go. Award-winning. When they say award-winning? No. Just kidding. <laughs> that's, that's so bad. <laughs>